Okay, this is part two of Dying Rose from Sweet Lynch. And this is a CBT lesson for Lisa. We're on the top of page three in the tabs, continuing a, um, section three actually, which would be this. So that's familiar, right? The first part, three E, four G, half step in. Stop it and then pick it again, half step release. So, 5D after that. And then this time, 3 4 on, on the D and G. Um, play them four times. And on that fourth one, hammer onto the fifth fret D string. It's a little bit altered from the one before, so. One three three A D G. This is actually something we did earlier. Twice. So two times, open A, and then one, three, three, E, A, D. And then, if you listen close, you will hear, after the rest, fret hand muting, which, you know, just lightly um, set your fingers over the strings and go down up. It doesn't have to be, you know, over all six. Just emphasize, you know, E through G, or, you know, aim for that. Don't aim to get all six. A mute's a mute, but you don't want it to be, that's too thin, and that's too big, so. Um, so we have, and then this part, I love this progression. Oops. Gotta do, do it again, can't go down like that. Alright, so that part is... Um, if you listen close in here as well, you hear an open D going to the first fret on the D, and it's it's quick, so um, you may want to go up down. It could be two down, but it flows more a little bit with the up down. Once you get there, leave it. Go three G four B, so it's a power chord with the octave in it. So then two D and one B, and play D. Open G palm muted and 1B. Not a big deal if you can't catch the palm mute. It's in there, but. So. Oops, my whammy went sharp there. And then 3D, open G, and then bar the first fret on the E and B. Maybe this is why I was thinking, Hunter, because he used like a, that chord in there. Um, what you'll do on that is D, G, and then the E and B together. So. And then third finger two on the D, slide it a whole step sharp to four. And we're building a chord here, so once you get there, go to first finger two G and middle finger three B. So. Beautiful. And then you're back, you know, that's, you'll go, uh... Alright, so you got a bunch of repeats, is what I'm getting at. Section one, one time. Section two, one time. Section three, one time. So that's all the parts. Section one, uh, one time. And then the rhythm for the solo, which, you know, it's just a simple thing. It's just a G chord. But uh, man, when we get to the solo, it's going to be fun. So this, you'll be able to kind of relax a little bit here. So G major, a lot of the rock metal players do it like this. I guess it makes it not quite as pretty. It just sounds cool and it feels cool to play. I don't know. Middle finger 3A or 3E. Mute the A, which you have to kind of work not to mute it, and then we need 3B and 3E, and just um, um, strum all six. Do it again. Again. And again. The doll house. Never mind. Okay. Um. 
but we will fill in that solo one when you're ready for CBT lesson part two. Um, after the that, it's section one one time, and then I wrote it again. Section one one time, no no uh, slide. You won't be sliding off of the. Uh, you'll just go, and you end with the G major chord, the one you just did for the rhythm of the solo. Okay, so moving along. Um, I kept going on it, so we got um, a little over, a, well, the starting of two pages of some of the solo stuff. And I wish I had my Wawa pedal here because it would be cool to have it. Am I missing a page, man? Don't tell me. Oh, no. Thank God. There it is. The top of page four. There's a Wawa pedal, man, and it sounds killer. I wish I had it here with me. I don't. Um, primary effects are like delay and reverb. But um, here we go, into the solo. I'm gonna, and I got it into subgroups for you too, Lisa, so you'll see what I mean. Um, we have... Yeah. Twelve D hammer to fourteen. Twelve G. Fourteen D palm mute. So it's and then twelve G hammer to fifteen. And then twelve G vibrato slide. I don't know why I was doing the Angus Young vibrato there. This is Lynch. Matter of fact, Lynch and D Martini, the only two that I and Greg Howe do that. Uh, I can't do it, man. Almost did it. Anyways, it's cool sounding. Greg Howe does it too. Um, and then kind of slide into nothing, basically. I gotta do the regular vibrato for me. Slide it, you know, not all the way down, but you know, right around a little past mid neck, and then boom, silence the slide. I like to explain those little things because if you don't know, you don't know. And then, um. So this is subgroup two uh, 12 high E, third finger, bend it a half step. As you're holding the half step, alternate pick down up. So it's um, don't release it though. So and then we got to grab the 10 E without bending it and slide it to 12. And there's just like a little little minor vibrato there. So and then um, this I just love Lynch's no choice here. You'll go 10, 12 on the high E, down up, and then middle finger 11B. Um, kind of an exaggerated, like, um, whole step bend, vibrato. I want to do it, man, so bad. Anyways. So... Um, after that, subgroup three comes in. Um, this is fret 18, whole step, and then a half step end. Um, so you'll bend it a whole step, two frets, then stop it, don't let it release, then bend it again a half step. So in reality, you're like, those are the notes. Lynch could have just played them. But as you know, that can be very mechanical, and Lynch is definitely not mechanical. So we have. Fifteen E, eighteen B, and then fifteen E, fifteen B. And then um, you'll bar it, so, or use two fingers on fifteen B and E, so. When you do that, after you go, you may want to add the middle finger there, but um, so it'd be. You'll hear the whammy in there, doing the vibrato. So after you go. 
and then 17 high E. And there's a pinch harmonic half step bend slide. Believe it or not, I can get that pinch harmonic on my little Roland microcube in my room, but not on my Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. Go figure. All right. Um, then, classic Lynch stuff here, man. This is why he's so amazing, because when he plays, you can tell it's him. Real, like, abstract and, and choppy and flowing all at once. Um, the 11th fret on the high E, and you can kind of hear how he's grabbed the 11B with it, but it's not as loud, and he bends it, so... Sounds like a race car or something. And then, eight on the high E, you're gonna pick vibrato, do a quick pull off and a hammer onto eight B. Now to hammer on the eight B, you're going out of nowhere. So it'd make more sense if I just played it, huh? Slow. All right, and then um, this next part, really cool. You'll go eight on the high E, you're gonna bend, release, pull off to six. Oops, I think that's supposed to be a half step and I didn't even notate it, I'll have to fix that on your tabs. I need to notate that. Now I'm going to forget. Although I will double check it. Okay, so. It's real fast, man. Explosive. That's uh, Lynch for you. So you'll bend it, release it, pull it to six. And then pick the eighth fret B, pull off to six, hammer back to eight and then knuckle shift down to eight on the high E and that's gonna start another really cool one. Um, but I would look at that as your subgroup. Basically, you wanna get used to Right? Once you get to the eight, Love this one. Um, once you get there, like I said, you're going. You're back to the eight. Short rest, and I mean short. That's what's going on. Um, eight, hammer to nine, pull to eight, pull to six, pull to open. A lot of notes with one picked note. Let me show you the next part. Then you'll go open B, pick, hammer to four, and hammer to five. So. And then go six B. You're gonna put a pinch harmonic on that and bend it a whole step. And then move to eight B, pinch harmonic, vibrato, slide. Kind of slide into nothing, but. Slow down. And that's it for the solo. Um, um, dang it. Earlier on I said that I caught something in the intro riff that I'd be explaining later. I don't know if this was in the intro, but it's definitely at the end. I think. You'll know it. It's the, the country sound on one, um, which was... Oops, 
try that again. You almost want to think in groups of three. I almost got that. Let's see. Slow down, you're gonna go. You're gonna go. Just kidding. Uh, three high E, pull off to one. Three B, down. One B, up, pull off to open. Three G, down. So we can just kind of try it to there, you'd have. You can subgroup it, you know, however you want, Lisa, but I mean, really, you can do three things for your first subgroup. Right? Up on the 1B, pulling off to open, so. 3G after that. So after the 3G, down. Go up on the 2G, pull off to open. 3D down. Up on the 2D, pull to open. That's the first chunk of it. So we have. There's this beat rhythm with a pick that's like. Right? That's your pick notes. And then the next part, um, it's a double pull off. You're going to go three on the G, pull to two, pull to open. Three on the D, pick down, and then pick up on the second fret and pull to open. So you have down on 3A, up on 1A, pull to open. So the top of page five, you got. You know, group them, you know, it could just be. And, uh, to. Be good, oh, be good, oh. And then the low E is a double pull off. You'll go 3E, pull to one, pull to open, and then pick the one. Slide to three, and then slide that. You don't have much room to slide, so you're gonna slide around fret one, and then stop it with this hand, so you don't wind up with this note ringing. You don't want it to be, we don't want that. We want it to stop in flight, if you know what I mean, as you're sliding, so. So right when you get over fret one, boom, just do the old karate chop. Um, I listened close on this. Here, let me uh, sit down. Let me sit down. Um, on the end, like I said, I, we had two different concepts that I was using, not we, but me, when I was figuring this out. And um, so I did you know, the iTunes thing, and then I couldn't get it on my PC. It said I had to authorize my PC. I'm like, what the heck's that all about? So I uh, ended up deleting all of it off of my PC, went back to the iPhone and plugged in my speakers to it. But the, I noticed those speakers were a little bass end heavy on it, but it was still cool. You know, I was able to have bigger speakers and put them up at ear level. <coughs> but I really wanted to, to get this as close to Lynch as, as Mike Gross can humanly do it. So then um, after the fact, I listened to it strictly on my iPhone, which is going to be a little tiny speaker, which naturally is going to let more of the high frequencies cut through and I heard a few few things that I wasn't quite hearing or hearing loud enough um, with the bassier speakers and one thing I wasn't positive on is the, the country Nashville sounding riff you know, the one we just did it's uh 
Um, is the pick progression of it. Because <clears throat> when I went to my iPhone, um, initially I had it... Um, <laughs> Doing a lot of double rolls for the pull-offs, um, and then listening on the iPhone, or, or vice versa. I can't remember which source I was using, but I couldn't hear the pick attack as much, so it was probably on the bassy speakers. But I do believe this is, you know, the notes are there, the notes are right. Um, I'm 99% sure I've got the the way that Lynch is picking it and everything. But you know, um, I had a blast doing this. Needless to say. Um, a lot of times I use pens when I do my CBT lessons for my students. I knew in advance, after hearing this amazing song that Lynch and Michael Sweet did, that I better use a pencil with an eraser on it. And thank God I did. So anyways, uh, thank you. Let me know when you're ready to move on to the solo and all that stuff, man. I'll have, I'll have a blast doing it. And if you have questions, you know, you, you know how to contact me. You see me on Facebook and you got my email and all that good stuff. So just uh, let me know if you have any, any issues or troubles with it. Okay.